Hi everybody. It's still morning. Good morning. Got my drink. Good morning. I have a couple announcements I'm going to make at the end. So stick around. I'm just saying. Uh, let's do a song. <clears throat> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly rest in Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. It's a good one. So this morning's verse, hello, uh, today is the 41st episode of my Gratitude Chronicles. And the verse is 1 Chronicles 4.10. Now, this verse I have actually heard over the years and I think it's taken out of context, used in the wrong way. Um, people have used it for like the name and claim kind of thing. You know what I mean? And, um, but they also, but, but also on the other side of that, people steer completely clear of something that is in the word of God. And I just think it's interesting. That's my verse today. So we're going to read it. This is what First Chronicles 4.10 says. It says, now Jabez, Jabez, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but just so you know, his name means caused, caused by pain. His mother named him Jabez because I guess she bore him in childbirth and it was a lot of pain. And your name like was a declaration of your future. So it's almost like she was saying your future is going to hold pain and sorrow because you were so painful for me. Anyway, I, I don't know that I'm a fan of his mother. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. And it also says that he was more honorable than all of his siblings. And so that was interesting. So his mom said that his, his name was Jabez, which meant caused by pain, and his future was going to be full of pain and sorrow, which I think is terrible. But but even though that was the case, he was, it says in the Bible, he was more honored than like all of his siblings. So here's what the verse says. It says, now Jabez called on the God of Israel. Remember that. That's a little ding ding. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed and enlarge my border or territory and that thy hand might be with me and that thou would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. Okay, that's like almost all you know about Jabez in, in the Bible. And you might read past it, but here's the thing. It's in there though, this small little snippet. And it says that God granted him what he requested. I just, like, there's so much packed in there. So let me tell you. In that day, there was, I don't know if it's called polyamory. I don't know. The worship of multiple gods. Lots of gods. Little G. Little G God. And so the fact that that it calls out that he recognized not this generic when someone says, oh, I believe in God. I, well what God, you know, little G God, like, or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, like the one true God, the covenant God, or like little G God, <laughs> you know, uh, technically there's cultures that have thousands of gods, you know, uh, that are, that are dead and have, that are nothing, that have no power. So anyway, in that time, so it says the God of Israel, he recognized who the one true God was. Pretty neat. And then he asked him to bless him. He asked him to enlarge his territory and that God would keep him from harm and pain and that he would change his future. And the declaration of the fact that his mother said his, his life was and his name even was called out that it was caused by pain and going to be pain. And he asked, he asked God and God granted it to him. Right. 
Let me break down a couple things. First of all, he was a man of prayer. That's the first thing, right? Like in this small little snippet, he recognized who the one true God was and he was a man of prayer. Prayer is the most powerful thing we can do, but we look at it as like the last option. You know, things are going wrong. We've done our hustle. We've spun all our plates. We've called this person. We did blah, blah, blah. It's not working out because we're, you know, who we are. And then we pray, you know, there's that saying, there's no atheist in a foxhole, you know? And the thing is that if we really believe that prayer is the most powerful thing and we stand on that, like God blesses that. So he was a man of prayer. And next he prayed to the one true God, God of Israel, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not the little G gods, which we said. And he asked, you know, it says in the Bible, you have not because you ask not. Here's the thing. There, there is like this uh, really icky, wicked the theology of this name it and claim it, you know? Um, you have not because you ask not. Um, you have faith to believe of a mustard seed and it's mustard seed and it's done. Like, I want a big house. I want the cars. I want all the stuff. It's already in me. I'm going to claim it. That's just not biblical. That's from the pit of hell. You're welcome. <laughs> However, on the other side of that, people don't ask because they're so afraid of looking materialistic or something goofy and they don't even stand in biblical truth to ask God. You don't think that God wants you to enjoy your life on this side of heaven. You don't think that God wants you to experience the goodness of the good works that he had planned for you from the beginning of the foundations of the earth. You don't think God wants that for you. So you would rather live in misery and false humility and I'm supposed to suffer because you don't want to look like these weird name it and claim it people. But look, listen, you don't have to do either of those things. Just saying. Anyway, there are some attachments that have to be broken off of our lives. It is not a sin to enjoy your life. It's not a sin to ask God to enlarge your territory, whether that's physical so that you can have the capacity to use that to bless even more people and, you know, or whether it's a spiritual territory that you, you're you wanting God to bless and influence. Like, you can ask for that. That's good. And, you know, he also asked God to keep him from harm and pain. There are some things that God allows us to go through because... It's the only way to draw us close to himself and it's the only way to get our faith where it needs to be because he cares more about your soul and your spirit and your faith than he does your physical experiences. He wants you. He wants your heart. So there are things that he allows you to go through and then there are things that you decide and he's like, ooh, that's going to be a painful consequence and I'm going to let you experience that. <laughs> okay? But I'm not talking about that. There is also an evil harm that is out to seek, kill, and destroy you. And I mean, I think that this is multifaceted. When he says, God, keep me from harm and pain. I mean, you can ask God to keep you from harm and pain. Even the pain that, you know, he might be having whatever set out for you to learn. You want to learn. You want his will. But you don't, you can ask him to protect you from the enemy, from pain and from people that might come against you. But it says that God granted it to him. I just really like that. And let's see. He asked God to bless him and to walk in blessings of God, not man's ideology of what that looks like. But he's like, God, I want you to bless me. Whatever in heaven that you've got determined for me, I want that. All the what the good works and the blessings, the enlarged territory that keep me from pain and change the outcome of my future and my destiny to, to not be the declaration of what my name was. Like he asked God for it. And he says, he asked the one true God. It says basically that he had the right attitude and the right heart about the matter. And what else did I write? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, this is the end of basically what I have to say about this. I, I don't want to experience pain, but see, pain and sorrow sometimes are the portals that God uses to bring joy and wisdom and growth. It's just, it's just, it, that's just a reality. I mean, 
you would have no idea what what joy and you know wisdom and all these things were if you didn't have to come through that portal of sorrow so there are some things in our life that God uses to grow us and all things in Christ work together for our good for those who love God and are called according to his purposes not some things all things nothing's wasted but I don't want to live shackled to some ideology that I can't have an enlarged territory or peace or financial freedom or the abundance of ability to take care of those I love. Like, I'm going to ask for it. I want creative ideas. I want a godly heart. I want my husband to have a godly heart. You know, I, I mean, he does. I'm just saying. I, I pray for these things. I want creative thoughts. I want entrepreneurial ideas so that I can have financial freedom to care for my parents and my loved ones. Like, I'm going to ask for it. I'm going to ask God to keep me from pain. But I'm going to also ask that I, that he help keep me desiring what he wants for me. That the things in my heart are the desires of my heart would line up with him and that if it's not something that's good for me shut the door I don't want it open just don't even just don't even make it something that I gotta go hmm what maybe shut the door I, if it's not f from you or of you I, I don't want it above all things that I'm asking I want my heart to be close to God because unless you're not paying attention to the world we live in a crazy time and the God could come back at any day or you're not guaranteed tomorrow and he could take you home and then you will be faced with the Lord. And I don't want to just be saved by the skin of my teeth. I want to have made an, a ripple so that people can know that there's freedom in Christ, that you don't, you don't have to suffer. You know what, you know what I mean? Anyway. I really like this prayer. I'm going to pray it more. Um, and I think that we need to be careful of thoughts that we have. Keep your thoughts and minds captive. If you're starting to think, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a sin to be wealthy. Mm, no. The love of money is, is evil. The root of all evil. But asking God for financial freedom and, and the ability to care for those you love, that's actually honorable. Break yourself out of some of these things. Asking God to keep you from pain. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You understand what I'm saying? You have to start determining if what you're saying lines up with the Bible or lines up with some weird ideology that you grew up with or that you were taught or that you learned from some funky church. Not, a, not all churches. You understand? Like, not godly, Bible-based. Anyway, I'm rabbit-holing, but you understand what I'm saying? So I really like this. You have to have the right heart, the right attitude. Ask God for these things and ask him to hold you and keep you close because here's the thing. You can put you can be saying that you can be listening to people and hearing people talk about God and I pray and like I heard the celebrity pray on uh, this YouTube thing with a very very famous pastor and the pastor asked the celebrity to pray and I was watching and he prayed and I was like, "Okay, and at the end, he said, and we ask all these things in your son's name, amen, or whatever. But he never said the name of Jesus. And I was like, hmm. And a lot of people were like, oh, you know. And I was like, but he never said the name of Jesus. I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? Be careful who you listen to. Anyways, um, I love you like a crazy person. <laughs> and you'll notice I'm not... I'm downstairs today because I'm on baby duty because <sighs> Derek's at work today and so I've got the baby and so I'm not upstairs in my office. Anyways, I love you so much. I hope that you have a great weekend and please be good to one another. Don't forget you're one of the one another's. You, you have to be good to yourself so that you can overflow in the capacity to care for other people. Don't let yourself, don't sacrifice yourself on the altar of being a martyr so that you can care for other people. All I do is care for other people, but then you are completely fried, burned out, and have nothing left in your spirit. That's actually not being loving to those that you love 
that's actually a selfish action because then you can come back and go, look at how burnt out I am. Look at what a martyr I am. That's dumb. Don't do that. Fill yourself with the word of God, with quiet time, with peace. Fill your spirit so that you can do things that are nice for yourself so that you can overflow in your capacity to care for somebody else. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I say this because I also do that. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say. I love you and I mean a peanut. Mwah.